gentler invitations. <clears throat> I am Cassandra Pentecost, seeker of the Chantry. Dragon Age 2. The, as the name suggests, second game in the Dragon Age series. And so far, the only entry of which the title includes a number. But did you know Dragon Age 2 was actually going to be called Dragon Age Exodus? Or that it started out not as a full game, but as an expansion to Dragon Age Origins? Well, in this video I'm gonna tell you all about the content that was cut from Dragon Age 2. Tell me everything you know. You aren't worried, I'll just make it up as I go. Not at all. You'll need to hear the whole story. So first a little bit about Dragon Age 2's development. On release, the game received praise for the companions and writing, but its reuse of maps and assets was widely criticized. While I agree that more unique maps would have been great, there is a good reason why they were reused so much. In the cut content from Dragon Age Origins video I did, I talk about how in game development there is always content that doesn't make it into the game for various reasons. And one of these reasons I imagine being especially true for Dragon Age 2. The one I'm talking about is time constraints. Dragon Age 2's development was extremely rushed. If you're a fan of Dragon Age, you'll most likely know that Dragon Age 2 was developed in only a bit over a year. Basically, EA executives wanted Bioware to release a product on a regular basis. The new Dragon Age game was supposed to fill that gap, and EA gave them only 14 to 16 months to complete it. Because they had so little time, the team was unfortunately forced into a crunch for an extended period, which is why they were forced to cut so many things and reuse so many assets. What didn't help is that they were still working on Dragon Age Origins Awakening expansion while Dragon Age 2's development began. Dragon Age 2 started out as an expansion to Dragon Age Origins, and it was going to be called Dragon Age Exodus. After that, it became a standalone expansion that players didn't need to play Origins for. A few months into production, however, EA told Bioware, Hey, so... expansions like this don't sell very well, so let's make it a sequel instead, yeah? Wait, hold on. A sequel? Oh, also, uh, we'll call it Dragon Age 2. Because then, people will know it's a sequel. Well, I don't think that's such a good Oh, and we kinda need it to be done in, say, 14 to 16 months? Wait, what? But I'm sure that won't be a problem for you, yes? Well, actually- Great, that's settled then. Okay, bye now. Well, shit. This meant that Bioware now had to make the game even bigger, while only having about a year and a half to do so. Alright, before I go on and talk about all the things that didn't make it into the game, here is a fun little fact. Dragon Age 2 had a codename that was used strictly internal. And this codename was... Nugstorm. And for some reason that just reminds me of Sharknado. But with Nugs. The writers once considered Rolana to be the one possessed by Justice instead of Anders. According to David Gator, this was changed for two reasons. The first one being, they needed someone whose main concern was mages. Valana's main concern was the Dalish. If they had picked her, they would have had to involve far more Dalish story elements than they were prepared to. The second reason was, none of the writers liked the idea of Valana being possessed by justice. To them, as David Gitter himself said, it seemed to be, take Valana in Awakening and multiply everything annoying about her by 10. And so they quickly moved on from that idea and changed it to Anders. We all know how everyone in the game always tells us how dangerous mages are, and how every mage is always at risk of being possessed by a demon. Though the experience of playing as a mage or having one in your party doesn't really match up with what the lore tells us. As a player we are never really at risk of being possessed every time we use spells. We never really get to experience that struggle. The closest we get to that is the Circle Mage origin in DAO. Where, during our harrowing, we meet Mouse, a pride demon who tries to trick the player into believing he's an apprentice, trapped in the Fade after the Templars killed him for taking too long to complete his harrowing. Allow me to welcome you to the Fade. You can call me 
Well, mouse. Now, you may wonder, why am I telling you all this? Well, we were meant to have a similar experience in Dragon Age 2 if playing a Magehawk. Choosing to play a mage would give us a subplot that centered on Hawk struggling against demonic possession. Hawk would slowly be tricked by a demon in their head that they thought was real, and they would come very close to becoming an abomination. Only at the very last moment they would realize what was really happening. I'm kinda sad this got cut, I'd have loved to see that, would have been very interesting. I didn't really find anything about why they cut this from the game, but I'm imagining it's just because they didn't have enough time. Which is probably true for most of the things I'm going to talk about here. Kirkwall was meant to have progressive changes as time passed in the game, and NPCs would change with it. They were meant to be more realistic, meaning that they would react to Hawk and they would forget things over time, like forgetting they knew you or forgetting they knew you were a mage. Kirkwall itself was meant to be more alive too, way more crowded, and less blood mages. As we know, Varric tells an exaggerated version of the prologue when Cassandra interrogates him. Originally, these exaggerations were supposed to come back every act. According to David Gator, Varric would exaggerate the heck out of the story at the beginning of each act, until Cassandra calls him out on it. However, according to the Dragon Age wiki, each act would have ended with a dramatized and exaggerated version of the act's final boss. I'm not sure if this one's true because I couldn't really find a source for it other than the wiki itself, but I think it's entirely possible that this was the thing at some point. Now that I mentioned the prologue, the game originally had an expanded opening that allowed you to spend some time with Bethany and Carver before the Darkspawn attack. And that would have been great, honestly. Because I feel we don't really get to spend much time with them as it is. Like, we, we don't really get to bond with them as compared to the other companions. And of course it's sad to see Carver or Bethany die when the ogre attacks, because they're supposed to be your sibling, but you don't really know the character yet at this point, unless you've played the game before and happen to have this sibling in your party. So it's likely to make less of an impact compared to when either of them dies in the deep roads, because by then we actually got to know this character a little bit better. And speaking of sad things, I don't know about you, but I always feel a bit sad for Anders when he tells my hawk that the wardens forced him to get rid of Sir Pouncelot. Did the warden send you to bring me back? I'm not going. Those bastards made me get rid of my cat. Poor Sir Pouncelot. He hated the deep roads. And this might have something to do with my love of cats, but honestly, I'd have loved to see him in Anders' clinic, and maybe even have him tag along for our shenanigans in and around Kirkwall. And well, as it turns out, Sir Pouncelot was actually supposed to appear in Dragon Age 2. In Anders' clinic, to be exact. Unfortunately, the animation team had a difficult time developing a model for Anders' feline companion, and they didn't want him to simply sit in the inventory again either. When they didn't have enough time to make it happen, well, they tried to incorporate him in other ways. Apparently they had one piece of concept art where Anders' staff had a cat skull on it. But they decided not to go with that because that would be too mean. And um, yeah, I pretty much agree on that one. You know who else I really wish we got to see again? Shale. I really want to see Shale again. And we almost got to see her in Dragon Age 2. You know the quest that's called Finding Nathaniel? Yeah, well, originally that quest was going to be Finding Shale. But unfortunately this was cut and replaced with the Finding Nathaniel quest. No offense against Nathaniel, of course, but I just want to see my favorite bird-hating golem again. What's that? Did it hear flapping wings? There may be pigeons nearby. We should be alert. I'm sure you'll all remember the horrifying abomination that Orsino turns into before we fight him. I know I do. How could I forget? Ugh. And he does this even if we side with him. And I know a lot of people, including myself, are wondering... Orsino, why did you do this? You've been trying to prove that not all mages are bad. And now you do this. This is not helping. Not helping at all. As it turns out, Orsino was not even intended to be a boss fight, at least not when siding with the mages. 
Originally, you would have to only fight Orsino if you had chosen to side with the Templars, and you wouldn't even have to fight Meredith. Though that part of the plot changed for some reason, and his entire boss battle got cut. However, it was added back later on because Bioware felt the game needed another boss battle. And it was up to David Gator to write some fitting dialogue. And I don't think he was particularly happy about that. In the quest called Mind Massacre in Act 3, a panicked Huber tells you that all that came back from the bone pit this morning was a horse pulling a cart with a dozen mangled bodies. He asks Sarhawk to go check it out, and when we do, we found out that a high dragon has taken over the area and slain all the miners. We kill the high dragon, report back to Hubert, and the quest ends. However, originally, this quest also involved saving the miners as well as Jensen, and later it turns out that Hubert was actually aware of the high dragon's presence. The quest would end with the miners confronting him about it, and in order to avoid the wrath of the pissed off miners, he offers to make them all his partners. Hubert? You knew about the dragons? Robert! Reported dragons in the region, but they could have gone anywhere. I simply wanted to avoid panic. To think I didn't believe Jansen, you motherless bastard. I'll rip out your shriveled heart. No, we can make a deal. How would you all like to be my partners? Full dialogue can be found in a video uploaded by Dana Dutchy. And I hope I didn't butcher your name there, I'm sorry. Anyway, a link to this video is in the description, of course. And before I go on to the last big one in this list, I have a few smaller ones that I couldn't find much more information on, but wanted to add anyway. At one point, there was going to be a plot about the Templars pursuing Hawk or Bethany. This pursuit by the Templars would have been another incentive to go down to the Deep Roads, as they needed to leave town in order to escape. The Exiled Prince DLC was actually intended to be about Nathaniel Howe. However, this was changed due to the fact that Nathaniel can die in Awakening. And yes, Anders can die too, but the developers wanted him for Dragon Age 2, so they gave him the strongest armor of all. Plot armor. And now that we're talking about Awakening, if your Warden Commander completes the quest Worked to the Bone, you get a sword called Vigilance. This sword was meant to be obtainable by Hawk, but for some reason we can't get it through normal means, so the only way to obtain it is by using the console or through mods. If Connor survived the events of Origins unpossessed, he would at one point appear in the game as a Circle Mage, together with his uncle Tegan. There is a voice line that indicates Hawk was going to meet Cassandra in person at one point. Marin was intended to join the Grey Wardens if he survived the Fool's Gold quest. In the Legacy DLC, there was supposed to be a quest that would have you search for the hidden treasure of Gorth and Shirok, who was King of Kel Shirok during the First Blight, according to Varric. Unfortunately, this quest was cut for unknown reasons. Bioware have recorded character trailers for Hawk and each of the companions, which were to be narrated by Varric, but they were never released. So the last thing I'm going to be talking about, which is probably also the biggest thing on this list, is the Exalted March DLC. So the Exalted March was going to be an awakening sized DLC for Dragon Age 2, and it was meant to bridge the gap between Dragon Age 2 and Dragon Age Inquisition. It would have started in the Hanged Man with Cassandra's interrogation of Varric ending, and it would have focused on the after effects of Dragon Age 2's finale. Meredith turning into a big Red Lyrium statue would have caused the Red Lyrium to spread and eventually infest Kirkwall. We'd have ended up with what turned out to be the Red Templars taking over Kirkwall and serving as Corypheus's army. Yes, Cory was going to be this DLC's villain. It would have been up to our Hawk to stop him. In order to do that, we'd have to recruit various factions, sometimes choosing between different groups like Isabella's Felissima Armada and the Cunari at Aswatch. This meant that by choosing one group, we would risk our relationship with the others. At the same time, the Chantry would have become very upset about everything that was going on, and with all the chaos, the Kunari would have started to make a move on the Free Marches. The DLC would have also given us a chance to learn more about Sebastian's family. To top it all off, the expansion's ending would have been absolutely heartbreaking, as it would have had Varric dying a heroic death. And I sure do love me some dramatic death and heartbreak in Bioware games, but damn, Varric's death would have been rough. On a lighter note, 
There were plans for giving Hawk the option to marry their love interest. And if your Hawk chose not to marry, there would be alternate ceremonies for other party members like Bethany and Sebastian. There was even a wedding dress asset for a female Hawk, which did find its way into Inquisition. The dress is worn by a female Inquisitor if she marries Cullen, or it's worn by Sarah if she marries your Inquisitor. The reason the DLC was cancelled wasn't because of Dragon Age 2's reception, but it was a transition to the Frostbite engine, which made it very difficult for the developers. While I could have chosen to keep working on the Exalted March DLC while the switch to Frostbite was going on, it would have caused many problems for both the development of the DLC and a transition to Frostbite. So instead, Mark Dara, executive producer and project director at the time, made the difficult call to stop development on the Exalted March and go all in on what would become Dragon Age Inquisition. And that's it for the content that was cut from Dragon Age 2. If you found this interesting, make sure you check out the video I did on the cut content from Dragon Age Origins. And keep an eye on my channel, as I will definitely be doing one on Dragon Age Inquisition as well. Thank you so much for watching though, I really appreciate it. If you liked this video, let me know by liking this video. Or leave a comment and tell me all about what you think of all the content that was cut from this game. Which one of these would you have loved to see? And that's all for now though, I hope to see you in the next one.